Hello everybody and welcome back to Movie Swim. Today I'm going to be reviewing the 2024 film Sting and this is directed by Kia Roach Turner and stars Alia Brown. When a tiny spider from another planet is kept as a pet for young Charlie, she never anticipated the size it would grow to, but even worse, the terror it was about to bring on the building that she lives in. Now, I was quite looking forward to this one. I didn't expect anything special from the movie or anything like that. It just looked like a fun time. And after checking out Infested just a couple of months ago on Shudder and reviewing it on the channel, by the way, if you want to check that out, I realised that I haven't seen too much of the spider horror genre. And to be honest, I don't think it's something we get a lot of anyway, at least to my knowledge. But these both take place in an apartment block. And I just think it's weird sometimes when movies come out in the same year that are near identical. I think The First Omen and Immaculate are two very similar films just from this year. And we also have Infested and this. But also things like Dante's Peak and Volcano, which both came out in 1997. Sometimes it just happens. But anyway, I was still eager to check this one out, especially being someone who has arachnophobia himself. Yes, I hate spiders. And the first thing I can say is it really does feel like a throwback to those 80s creature type movies where things are running around these little small things terrorizing humans critters being the prime example but here instead of a ugly looking gremlin we have a giant spider instead and this movie always felt fun to watch i like the way the inhabitants of the building are just going about their daily lives but they have a no idea that this very venomous spider is moving around the vents and stuff and it's picking off animals and pets one by one, and as it gets bigger, it eventually moves on to the humans. And Sting felt like a very dangerous villain that we were dealing with here. One scene that stuck out to me was this parrot was just sitting in a cage, and it sees Sting's legs come out of the vent there, very slowly coming towards it, and this parrot starts freaking out in the cage. It kind of knows that this spider is coming for it and we do see the aftermath of this parrot that's kind of been turned inside out and it happens to a few of the animals there and it just shows what sting is actually capable of i mean everything in this building is at sting's mercy but the building itself had a very rundown feel to it there's no specialists here on combat trainer or anything or people who know how to deal with this sort of thing. I mean, they're just everyday people. That's the feeling it got, and they felt very, very vulnerable. So there's also a storm going on outside, and it gives off a sense of isolation because no one is really going in or out of the building. It's all just this one apartment block with this spider who has everyone at its mercy. And even though I was looking forward to this film going by the trailer, I thought it did look a little bit cheesy when this spider grows into a gigantic spider, really. And I thought, I hope the movie doesn't get silly when it gets to that point. But it actually got a hell of a lot better, especially in the third act, because this spider just felt even more dangerous the bigger it become. And that's pretty obvious, I suppose. I mean, it just became more and more menacing. And the fact that this is actually an alien spider, it's a species that we don't know of, of course. This is a spider that can mimic sound. So it can sort of get the sound of someone's pet, for example. And when it's trying to lure that pet's owner, into its grasp it will mimic the sounds of its pet so the owner will go towards and go oh call out the pet's name or whatever but really it's this spider pulling its prey towards it and i thought that was a cool little idea i suppose if it's an alien spider you can do that sort of thing as ridiculous as it sounds it actually worked for the film i mean it actually shows how clever this alien race of this spider actually is and it is very, very deadly as well. One scene, it actually paralyzes a human being and climbs into the human being's mouth and sort of breaks every single bone in its body from the inside. And I thought that was one of the creepiest scenes in the entire film. And the main protagonist here who keeps Sting as a pet, unbeknownst to her that it's an alien spider, of course, is Charlotte, played by Aliyah Brown. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's spelled very weird, her first name. But she has just played the young Furiosa in the latest Mad Max film, and she is an actress with real talent. However, her personality in this film was a bit of a mixed bag for me. I thought she was quite cool at times. She's like this, you know, no fear type of kid. And 
you know, she's got a little bit of an attitude there. So she's got a little bit of, you know, she's sort of grown up a little bit there. And you think, yeah, okay, you're in charge, you're in control. And she, there's a bit of a surprise and family dynamic in this film where she's sort of friends with her stepfather, but then she sort of backs away from him. And there's a little bit of a balance going on there, but it gives you something to latch on to for both of these characters because you kind of want it to work out for them. You know, they're struggling to sort of get a family going there because she's lost her father and stuff. The usual type of trope with the side characters, but I'm just glad they put something in there, you know, for something to root for, basically, even if it is just the most simple of storylines. But on the other hand as well, I mean, she is a little bit of a brat at times. When she doesn't get her own way, she sort of kicks off and pisses people off and stuff. So I was struggling in that department with her personality to sort of get fully on board with her. But she was, she was cool enough, I thought. You know, I think she's a wonderful actress and she's going to go far. Cool. We're going to call you Sting. However, she has this younger brother in the movie who's only six months old and as a father now, I was just like, okay, protect this kid at all costs. There are scenes where the baby is just in a cot and Sting is coming into the apartment and Sting does not care if it's a six-year-old baby or not. So I was kind of rooting for Charlotte there to protect her little brother. You know, that was always tense when Sting was getting near the baby, I thought. Like I said at the start of the review, guys, this is kind of a throwback to those 80s horror movies that were just so fun to watch and are remembered to this day. And that's what this movie feels like a lot, especially with the pace of the film. I think this movie absolutely flies by in its 90-minute runtime. It's welcome 90-minute runtime. Now, I know there might be people watching this review going, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Two-hour movies are great and stuff. And I agree, if done well. But sometimes it is just nice these days, especially with movies being so damn long, that we just get a nice 90-minute horror movie where you have a lot of fun and you're in and out. And, you know, it kind of goes down as one of your favorites of the year. However, guys, there are a couple of negatives with this movie, I must say. When I said at the start of the video, I have arachnophobia. Going into these films, I kind of want to feel that arachnophobia. And when I watched Infested on Shudder a couple of months ago, I definitely felt that. I was looking around the room, I was kind of scratching my back as the movie went on. But I've got to be honest, guys, here, I never really felt the spider senses tingling, if you like, because I was just. This spider never really made me my skin crawl or anything like that. And I think a lot of that was down to some CGI that we've seen on the spider. It's not terrible or anything, but it's definitely noticeable. And the whole arachnophobia deal didn't work for me too much in this film. There's also this specialist scientist in the apartment block who knows everything about spiders. And he's given us a little bit of exposition through the characters and i just thought oh that's very very convenient isn't it that we just happen to have this spider specialist in the apartment block i mean it just felt a little bit like a little bit of lazy writing but it is a small nipper also a little bit of a pet peeve of mine lately and i've noticed this with so many modern movies is this film starts with an opening scene and then just goes back to four days earlier why do a lot of these modern movies not just horror just modern movies in general start at a certain point of the story and then go back it really irritates me can't we just get from the start of the story to the end maybe that's just me i don't know but it kind of just grates on me now and again However, guys, I had a really fun time with this film. Spider Horror is something I would like to see at least maybe once a year from now on. Maybe there are tons out there and I just don't know about them too much. But I just never really get them on my radar. But this year, having two within a couple of months was a nice surprise for me. And I enjoyed both of them. So, yeah, more of this, please. That would be great. I'm just going to go ahead and rate this movie now. I'm going to give Sting a 7.5 out of 10. Highly recommend it, guys, if you just want a, a good bit of fun, really, and a bit of a switch-your-brain-off type of film. Okay, guys, at the end of these reviews, I always like to leave a little fun fact. Now, a fun fact for Sting is that the main protagonist of this film is actually called Charlotte. And I don't know if this is fact or not, so really, is it a fun fact? But 
I think this is more likely that she's called Charlotte because of the story Charlotte's Web, which is also about a very clever spider. Okay, guys, hope you all enjoyed this review. If you want more 2024 horror movie reviews, they will be in the link down below. Infested will be in that playlist as well if you want to check that review out. What did you think of Sting? And do you know any good spider horror movies? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and I'll get back to you all, I promise. Thanks so much, guys. You take care, and I'll see you on the next video.